Makeup Revolution, I love you, but baby, sweetheart, you gotta stop with the multiple weekly releases or I'm gonna understand because at this point my brand loyalty to you is getting more expensive than a crack cocaine habit. Gentlemen and everyone in between, hi, my name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. And if you guys are not for the first time over here, you might figure out that I'm looking quite different and quite strawberry blonde. I wanted to have pink hair, but unfortunately the dye didn't catch, so now I'm kind of left with this um, rosy sort of peachy shade. My stylist said we're gonna give it another try next week, so keep your fingers crossed for me because I just I just want to have all of that Sakura Haruno from Naruto vibes, you feel me? Just fingers crossed for me. Now, if you are new, hi, thank you very much for subscribing, welcome. This is the type of video that I do every week. I don't have a set schedule because I suck. I mostly post this either on a Monday or a Tuesday night my time which is maybe Wednesday morning in the US I have absolutely no idea it could be a different time time depending on which US time zone you actually are in this is basically a video where I either gush over new makeup releases or talk shit about them because as I said this is a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. Now the um, originator of this sort of video idea is Samantha March. I'm gonna link her down below. She's also made a playlist for all of us small and big and medium creators that do this challenge so go check the playlist out. And now let's get to it because we've got quite a bit of stuff to talk about. Okay, let's start with a makeup geek. Now, if you've not been living under a rock or if you are a messy bitch and love drama, just like me, then you will know that Merlina, makeup geek's owner and CEO, recently made a video titled My Truth where she basically said that as a small brand, Makeup Geek isn't talked about enough because they don't have money to pay the big influencers a PR um, and they don't have money to pay for specific videos where the influencers talk about them. You see, this new release um, confirms my conspiracy theory and that is it's not that people don't talk about Makeup Geek because they don't get PR. It's that nobody talks about Makeup Geek because Makeup Geek is, bo Geek is boring lately. They've not put out something on trend or before the trend for years. And you cannot come out with boring ass shit in such a competitive place like the cosmetics industry and then complain that people don't talk about you. They don't talk about you because they're boring, not because you don't pay them. Latest release is the prime example of it. They've come out with a pumpkin spice palette for fall, which is indeed a very original. Sarcasm, of course. Uh, this is the palette. It's boring. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. It's the same tones that everyone's bought over and over and over for the past two years where warm tones have been in fashion. Merlina, you cannot come with nine shades of browns and creams and some sort of vague orange that doesn't know what it's gonna do there and then complain nobody's talking about you. Of course they're not gonna fucking buy it and talk about it because everyone that's a beauty connoisseur has these shades 10 times over. And people that aren't makeup aficionados probably don't buy Makeup Geek. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It really ain't. And the price is absolutely... She's asking $62. For this palette. Now I understand that because it's made in the US it's more expensive but like don't be surprised that you do not have such a huge presence. Don't be surprised it doesn't happen. Apparently now it's reduced to 35 needless to say this is available. 
If you want this and you don't have these tones 10 times over in your collection already, I hear Makeup Geek shadows are really good quality, so knock yourselves out. But I won't. Next up, Brija Cosmetics. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I even asked the owner on Instagram if I'm pro if you pronounce it as Brija or Brija or Brija cuz phonetics. But yeah, they are coming out with their first eyeshadow pressed palette, so in actual pans as opposed to loose pigments, as part of their fall collection, and it released yesterday, I think? Yesterday or the, the day before yesterday, and I'm really interested in this because it's got some nice grayish purple tones, you also got like a very pale gold over there. So if I have the funds, I'll probably pick this up very soon. I am curious about their formula. They're also coming out with some stuff that doesn't interest me, but might interest other people, such as tan loose eyeshadow pigments or loose blush and four matte liquid lipsticks. I am not into loose anything or um, liquid lipsticks for that matter, but if you're into that, you might want to try them out. Speaking of indie, my favorite indie brand at the moment, Igneous Cosmetics, is coming out with a new fall collection on the 21st, which incidentally is also their first birthday, so yay, happy birthday, Igneous Cosmetics. They are coming out with two eyeshadow palettes slash bundles. One is a blue-green wonder, and the other is golds and purples, and I am definitely, definitely, 100% getting these once my paycheck graces me with its presence i can't wait i absolutely love igneous cosmetics and i'm gonna link my review of uh, my first purchase from them i'm gonna link it down below so go check that out next more from the indie world m cosmetics came out with a limited edition bombshell palette which is an absolute feast for the eyes it's beautiful to look at it's just very candy-like colors that I absolutely adore. It's 45 US Canadian, it's so a bit out of my budget, unfortunately. Why the I fuck you lie? Grab some singles from them. However, if you do like this color story, just go grab it because it's beautiful. The swatches are just drool-worthy and yeah, I, I want it so bad. But 45 Canadian is a bit out of my budget. Next, let's talk about Too Faced, which of course just flooded the market with all of kinds of holiday releases and I'm just over here like, no, 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 I'm not hearing you, it's not Christmas yet, no, 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 but of course the makeup industry refuses to acknowledge that we're in fucking September, just give me Halloween shit, I don't want Christmas collections yet, give me Halloween, let's get spooky. But no, everybody just wants to bring Santa Claus into your house prematurely. <sighs> they probably learned that from their dads. <clears throat> okay, let's get to it. So there are three things that I find interesting from this new Too Faced holiday release. So they've got the gingerbread palette, which is available already, and it's $49. And I already saw people purchasing this and selling it for like double the price on Mercari and Depop and Poshmark and if you do this, you fucking suck. You fucking suck and everybody hates you. Uh, but yeah, I, had those, I hate those kinds of people. Now, this really intrigues me. It's probably gonna take a while before it gets to Sephora's in Romania, but I'm definitely going to go check it out, swatch it, Give it a whiff, of course, because it's scented. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna snort that ginger spice smell like crack. I can't wait. And if I do like how it swatches, I'll probably pick it up. Then you've got the sugar cookie and tickled peach palettes, which are twenty six dollars each. These are very boring. However, I do like the tickled peach one because you know I'm a sucker for pinky browns. Uh, what? just itches at me is the fact there are those two pans that are a bit more rectangular than the others and it just why would you do that it, it, it just bothers me on a very fundamental aesthetic level that is not you're just you're fucking with the golden means with the symmetry of it all and just stop stop i'm crazy i know i'm sorry 
let's talk about something else and nabla cosmetics my og love of indie is coming out with 12 new matte eyeshadows and one uh, free form you know magnetic palettes they call them liberty palettes some of the shades are quite boring and despite the fact that I absolutely love and adore Nabla's matte formula I'm not gonna grab them because I don't need duplicates in my collection however I do plan to grab two or three that mustard tone that blue that cocky green I do plan on just um, making those mine and grabbing the palette because I love the feathery pink uh, pattern on it. I'm a sucker for pink. Kylie is coming out with her uh, collab with her best friend called Jordan. And it's going to be one eyeshadow palette, one highlighter quad, um, two glasses and one lipstick. And it's going to come out on the 24th of September. This palette really int intrigues me. I love the color story of this. Like, Kylie, I never know what to expect from her because she comes out with like three or four boring releases in a row and then she just wakes up one morning and she gives us this. And I want it. It's probably going to be super expensive and the shipping is going to kill me. And I'll probably end up being like, nah, I don't really want it that much, but I do want it. Speaking of expensive, she also came out with something that I absolutely don't understand why she did that. She came out with singles, which are $7 a pop, or you can get nine of them for like $63. Or you can get her empty palette plus all of the collection of the singles for $220, $220. I think this is a very poorly timed release and it's not gonna sell well because there are many single shadows out there that are much cheaper and much better quality that already have established presences in the makeup loving community and hers are quite expensive and from what I saw the swatches show that they are quite mediocre there was no void in the market that she needed to fill. There was no need to have such release from her. So I don't understand what her and her marketing team were thinking when they came out with this. It just seems like a very ill-timed, ill-conceived release for the atmosphere that's in the beauty community right now. Let's uh, move on. Becca came out with a new collection called the Volcano Goddess Collection. It's already available. There's one palette, one goldish highlighter, and three glosses. The palette is a complete fucking catfish. That is what I'm gonna call it. It's the Catfish Volcano Palette. Because you've got that exterior packaging that is absolutely beautiful and saturated with gem tones. And then you open it up and you see that it's all kind of sort of like muted and neutral-ish. Don't get me wrong, it's a pretty palette, but it's very inconsistent with its packaging and what it sort of promised. And I'm not gonna pick it up for the same reason. And also like the color scheme does not speak to me or inspire me at all. Neither am I going to pick the uh, glosses or the highlighter. I don't think they're anything special. I think there are things that Becca has already done a thousand times over. And just do something new already, Becca. Come on, you can do this. I, I believe in you. Believe in me who believes in you. You can come out with something new and fun. You can do this. Speaking of new and fun, NYX is coming out with limited edition Mackinac collection which is three eyeshadow palettes that retail for $25 each kind of expensive for NYX but I'm not surprised because their elements limited edition palettes were kind of the same price they were like $20 $25 or so then you've got three lipsticks three lip lacquers and three highlighter duos now these are already available in the US as far as I know, in Romania, they're coming going to come out next month. I did ask NYX Cosmetics Romania on Instagram, and they said they're going to have them in stores next month. I really do want to get the um, Grind, I think it was called. The Grind and the... Um, 
not the steam palette the other one you're gonna see them over here so i want to get like the first one in the like in the row and the last one the ones that are more warm toned more fall like uh the steam one looks interesting but i feel that it's just it's catfishing me a bit because what i really like are the, the is the first row with those two blues but then the rest is neutral cold tones which i don't really wear so I'm just gonna grab what I know for sure that I will wear and those are the Ignite. Yeah, that's what it was called. So I'm gonna grab Grind and Ignite for sure and the lip lacquers also really interest me, especially that blue one. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I can't wait for these to come to Romania. Next, Zoeva came out with a premier collection which consists of three brushes, three lip pencils, it seems all good things come in three. I have one eyeshadow palette and one blush palette, which all of this collection is inspired by the women of the Roaring Twenties. And it's gonna be available on the 24th of September. Why, why are so many companies putting out things on the 24th of September? Like, you ask people, is there a significance on, for that date? I mean, as far as I know, Thanksgiving? It's like on the first Tuesday of September, so it's not for Thanksgiving. I have no idea. Like, is there a significance between them coming out on the 24th or is it just coincidence? Because I'm like, I'm trying to put together the dots, but I feel like I don't have enough information to figure out why the fuck everybody is so obsessed with like that period of 2024. Anyway, I'm really interested in the palette and when it comes out and when I do decide to get it, I'll probably grab that and the um, Cafe palette still from them because I've been wanting that for a while but if I'm going to do a Zoeva order, I want it to be an order with more things so the shipping is worth it. I mean, the shipping is not that expensive to Romania. Um, I just want to get a couple of things while I'm at it, you know, just so I don't get like one palette and that's it. Okay, next up, KKW Beauty came out with the Cherry Blossom palette which retails for $50 and it's like the more pinkish sister of the, her classic palette and it just feels incredibly redundant and I don't get why she came out with a spring-like collection in autumn, it just beats me however i do think this is very pretty for people that love neutrals that are just a bit on the colorful side emily violet marie on youtube actually did a great redesign of the palette i'm just gonna link her video down below um beware don't watch it if you don't want to buy anything because i swear she made me want to buy like all of the singles that she was talking about and it's not good for my wallet and it's not gonna go be good for yours but go check it out nonetheless watch her video oh and speaking of emily Valley marie i love watching her video because she has such a soothing voice like her accent is pleasant her intonation is pleasant her voice is so very feminine i could hear her speak and talk for days and i know that sounds kind of a bit gay but if being gay for her voice is wrong, then I don't want to be right. Okay, next. Uh, actually, no, let's keep talking about KKW. What is very interesting, though, are those eight lipsticks. I feel that she came out with some interesting hot pinks, burgundies, um, pinkish reds that she didn't have in her collection before, and those are so damn pretty. And then there are three blushes and three lip pencils, which don't look like anything special. Okay, speaking of blush. Blush Tribe is coming out with a fall fusion palette, and I'm in love. I'm gonna be honest, despite all of the hype that Blush Tribe got here on YouTube, at least among medium to small creators, I never was attracted to any of their palettes like the Hasina, the Hasina 2 they were beautiful palettes but they weren't palettes that inspired me if you get what I mean like I could appreciate the aesthetics behind them but they weren't palettes that I could look like and be like yeah I want to do like 10 looks out of them or even two or three the arrangement didn't justify for me to grab them instead of something else that I already had in my collection but this Fall Fusion palette, 
whole boy. I want it. I'm gonna get it. Speaking of fall palettes, Colourpop came out with a new fall collection which uh, has some of their, um, you know, tube lipsticks, some uh, supernova sh shadows, like this liquid supernovas, and a palette that is absolutely gorgeous and I need it in my life. And I've been postponing doing a Colourpop order, God knows, for months. For months. Like, there's always been something else that caught my eye and I preferred to buy that instead but this time I think this is the month like the month of October made the, me the month where I finally get my Colourpop order because I want this so damn bad it's so gorgeous it's so inspiring just good job Colourpop good job makeup revolution came out with bunch of things like you god just take a break makeup revolution please okay let's get started with the most boring things um they came out with a new collaboration this time with petra lovely hair um i don't know if you should pronounce it petra or pietra or petra i have no idea it's written p-e-t-r-a um this palette is just it's uh, it's a fucking hot mess Congratulations to her for getting a collab, but this is a hot mess. This doesn't look curated at all. This just looks like, let's just grab whatever shades I find pretty. Doesn't matter if it's too much and just fucking dump them. Just fucking dump them. Just put everything in there, Makeup Revolution. I don't care, just put it there. It's got like a cooler side and a warmer side. No mirror. I don't care about the fact that it hasn't does, doesn't have a mirror. I care about the fact that this is just so poorly curated, so poorly chosen, it's it's just a fucking mess. It's what we Romanians would call a actually no, I think I think I think the um, proper term in American English would be a melting pot. It's just got everything, but it doesn't quite melt properly. Like it's got a bit of everything, but it's it's a hot mess. I don't know how to describe it. It just feels like too much. However, they do came out with something I really like. And this is a new collection. This is their High Heart Revolution Angel Heart Collection. You've got six glosses, one highlighter, and one palette. And I am definitely grabbing almost all of it. Except like two glosses. But it's very pretty. It's pink. It's my tones. I'm sorry. I'm a sucker. Makeup Revolution knows how to hit, to push all of my buttons. The palette is $15, then, no, $10, and then you've got the highlighter, which is seven, and the glosses are $5 each, and I plan to get like three or four of the glosses, the eyeshadow palette, and the highlighter, and this is where I go broke. Also, they're coming out with, they came out with their awesome, awesome Halloween collection. And there's a few eyeshadow palettes that to me look absolutely uninspiring and like kids makeup. There's like um, special effects makeup supplies such as liquid latex, white base, um, face paints and all of that which I'm not interested in. And then they have some beautiful dark vampy lipsticks with the skull and roses packaging and i'm gonna grab like two of those the black one and maybe the lilac one and they also have these amazing highlighters in these skull dripper bottles and i'm gonna grab two i'm gonna grab the one that is like an icy gold and then the red one because i think it would make a beautiful beautiful liquid blush However, if you're attracted to the bottle itself, you can find the bottle separately on AliExpress. It's a novelty thing. I'm I'm sure they got the same supplier as the people that sell it on AliExpress because it's a fucking skull dripper bottle. Come on. They didn't reinvent the wheel. So if you want just the bottle, you might head up to AliExpress and grab a couple of bottles of those and just use them for decoration or to hold whatever the fuck you want them to hold but i'm just gonna grab that from makeup revolution but yes this is basically everything that's come out this week that i feel is worth mentioning 
Tartans also come out with a bunch of holiday stuff, but then again, ho Tarte's holiday stuff is always such a hot mess that I don't even feel the need to mention it, but you can see it on trend mode. Otherwise, um, I think, I think despite the fact that the holidays are coming, for some reason I feel that brands are slowing up just a tad because the last weeks, like the, the first two or three times that I did this video, because this is like my sixth edition of Buy It or Deny It, but the first two or three times there were like 20, 30, 35 releases every week and I was so overwhelmed. But now it feels like they are either slowing down a tad or I'm becoming more discerning with what I want to pay attention to. So it might be it might be one, it might be the other. I'm not entirely sure. Nonetheless, I just want to say a couple of things. Thank you so much for watching. Um, come back next week or just, you know, check out the playlist if you want to continue watching these types of video, either from me or for pe from people that do them much better than me. And you guys go ahead, have a great day, a great night, evening, whatever it is. Go kiss your husband, wife, partner, pets, kids, whatever. And I hope I'll see you soon again. Bye.